All right, we're going to go to maybe the only person who's tired of the Olympics, Shonda in Paris. <laughs> not yet, not just yet. <laughs> um, um, thanks, Brian, for um, for the talk today. Um, I actually have a question that's a little uh, geared more toward the Olympics. Um, I'm here in Paris, and I don't know if this made national news, but a lot of the athletes were complaining about, like, the comfort level of where they were staying. And I've lived in two different countries and America is built on comfort, not so much everywhere else. Um, so how did you deal with um, the different conditions and also the jet lag? Because like there are people coming from all over the world, you know? So how, how did that play into um, your success um, or lack thereof during the, your time in the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, we all saw the reports of the cardboard box beds and, and all of that good stuff and how the American athletes were bringing their own a AC units and, and mattress pads and things like that. And, uh, you know, I, I get it. Again, when you're at that level, you're trying to figure out how to get a half a percent better so that you can have some type of competitive edge. And if that's what people think requires of them to get that competitive edge, you know, I'm all for it if they're they're there. Um, the villages were not super comfortable, but that's because they're developing these areas for all these athletes and they're probably doing it under some type of time crunch as well. And so, um, you know, you just kind of make the best of it. Uh, you kind of know what to expect ahead of time. And um, I don't remember feeling super duper uncomfortable when you're in the Olympics, you're so focused on other things. That, that the quality of your bedroom furniture is really, far, really, really far down the list. I mean, your focus is on much different things. And um, I think you'd hear a lot of athletes say that as well, that that were a part of the Paris Olympics too. Um, the jet lag thing is real. We, we literally had a sleep doctor on our team that would design uh, personalized sleep structures where we would need to be exposed to light and when we need, would need to be exposed to darkness so that we could minimize jet lag. And also most of those athletes, at least in my perspective and my experience, most of those athletes, they go, we would go to the Olympics about two, two and a half weeks early, just for the sake of acclimating beforehand and, um, and have an opportunity to ensure that we were at peak performance when the start of the games actually started. So um, jet lag wasn't a huge thing for us. I've actually lived uh, all over the world. So I lived in Europe for 11 years myself uh, lived in Italy for seven years. I lived in Turkey for two years. I lived in Poland, Russia. And so, um, I'm very aware of jet lag. <laughs> if you don't manage it, it definitely is not comfortable to be a part of. So. Yeah, very true. Thank you. Yeah.